the whole solving systems of equations dealio. Here's a system of equations. Remember, there's a few ways to do it. The graphing method, you could do the substitution method, or I kind of want to do like trumpet noises, like my favorite is the addition method, if the, the scenario calls for it. And in this case, this is totally an addition method situation. And what the addition method means is you basically add down. You add every single column down. And what happens is a variable will typically disappear if it is a good case for an addition method. Looking at this, you can kind of see like if I add down, those y's are probably going to disappear, which is cool. What's x plus 3x? This is 4x. You have 2y plus negative 2y like also known as 2y minus 2y, that's gone. I'm not even going to write it. It becomes 0. I'm not going to write plus 0. And then this is equals 12, right? And so now, by doing this little secret addition method, y magically disappeared. I can solve for x uh, like this, x equals 3. The thing is, is every addition method you know, problem you do kind of becomes a substitution problem anyways, because so what? When I solve a system of equations, I'm expecting to get a point, an x and a y, right? I have to solve for an x and a y. And this only gave me my x. So the addition method was cool for like half the problem. The good news is getting the other half the problem is easy. You just plug 3 in for either x and then solve for y. So this one kind of looks easy to be like, oh, I'll put my 3 in here. 3 plus 2y equals 10. All I did was plug it into that x, right? And then you're like minus 3, minus 3, 2y equals 7. Divide, divide both sides by 2, and your y is 7 halves, or 3 and a half. Apologies for the fraction. That was some poor planning on my part. But that's it. So it's pretty easy. The problem is, is like, you know, every teacher will tell you it's easy, and then in the real world, what's going to happen is they might not line up perfectly, right? So I'll give you one more just because we're enjoying this moment of happiness together, where they do line up perfectly, because they, you know, they're not uncommon. You know, here's another one. X minus 2Y equals 10, and then you'll be like, 2X plus 2Y equals negative 1. Oh, that's perfect. Look at my Ys. They're going to be gone in a second. Adding down, I get 3X. He's gone, equals 9. X equals 3. Plugging it back in to either one. That's a cool thing. Let's say you're like allergic to minuses because you think they're harder. Then plug it into this one. You have two parentheses plus two y equals negative one. I'm going to plug it into this little guy right here. So then I have six plus two y equals negative one uh, minus six minus six. I don't know what's up with the whole seven halves thing today. Maybe that's just like subconsciously keeps coming up in my life. But now we have our answer is x is here, y is here. So we have 3 comma negative 7 halves. So those are two problems where the addition method just happens to be set up perfectly. What you got to know is that even if it's not perfectly set up, you can change the equation, either one of them, uh, to make them perfectly set up. So if, here's an example. Let's say you had 3x minus 2y. If this comes out to 7 halves, then there's like something going on. Right, let's see what happens. E equals negative 1, and then this is x plus y equals 3. And you're like, oh, that's such a bummer because I love the addition method, but nothing cancels. I guess I should go home. No, here's the deal. You could do another method. Or if you really like the addition method, you can manipulate one of these so that they do cancel. And the reason that is mathematically legal is because do you agree that 2 equals 2, right? Whatever you do to both sides, as long as you do to both sides, you're not breaking any laws. I can multiply both sides by 10. And sure enough, 20 still equals 20. So as long as you do it to both sides, you're not breaking the law. So I would take this, and I'm looking at it. I could multiply the whole bottom by negative 3, which would cancel my x's. 3, negative 3. Or this is kind of already set up. What if I multiply the whole bottom by 2? Wouldn't I have negative 2y and positive 2y? I'm going to do that. You can multiply this whole thing by a number to cancel these. I'm going to rewrite the top guy in the interest of, uh, interest of clarity. Uh, I didn't change him, I just rewrote him. Now, distributing this, you get 2x plus 2y equals 6, right? Now, magically, the addition method is going to work. I have 5x equals 5, x equals 1, right? So that's cool. Plugging 1 back into either problem, this guy looks better. Or actually, this guy looked better before I changed him. I'll put it in here. Putting 1 in here, I have 3 times 1 minus 2y equals negative 1. 
minus my 3 minus my 3, negative 2 y equals negative 4, y equals 2. So my answer then is 1 comma 2. So that's if it's not already set up perfectly. You can totally manipulate top or bottom of the two equations so that they do. So that's the addition method, probably the more popular of the three. Don't tell the other two methods I said that because that's super mean. Um, but addition method is pretty awesome. And I didn't do any examples where uh, they came out to be uh, no solution or infinite number of solutions. But remember, if I did all this algebra and it came out to instead of x equals 1 or x equals a number, what if it came out to 5 equals 7? Right? That would be no solution. If the algebra works out and it comes out to a false statement like 5 equals 7 or 1 equals 5, this whole thing would be no solution because the two lines must be parallel and never cross. If you have the same thing, you do a bunch of math and it comes out to 2 equals 2, and those statements are totally factually true, then it would be infinite number of solutions, which graphically is the same line. Remember, I covered that more in a different video, but again, the addition method is beautiful. It works out. You should get an x and a y, which would give you a solution. But remember, if it comes out weird and 7 equals 2 or something false, no solutions. If it comes out to 5 equals 5 or 10 equals 10 and it's true, then that's infinite number of solutions. And that's it. That's how you do the addition method. Probably the cooler of the three. And remember, if you're having a hard time at your, uh, at your math class at your local high school, you can take it online at Silicon Valley High School and try to pass it there and have the credits be transferred back to your high school.